Last crystal floor is the floor of the of the of the chariot. The angels are the four wheels. Of course, Yeshua, it's a wind power, it's whirlwind power, it's Rosh Chodesh power, and the, the, the Ruach HaKodesh powers Yahweh's presence, doesn't it? How does Yahweh's presence power it in your life? Through the whirlwind, through the wind. This is a fuel of a Ruach powered chariot. Are you with me? How about this one? Is it possible that the throne of Yahweh is a chariot? Not just the presence of Yahweh, how about the throne of Yahweh? <laughs> According to this it is. According to this, the glass, the glass crystal is the expanse, and the wheels are under the crystal, which must make the crystal the floor of the chariot of his presence. Are you getting this? Watch it. Above the expanse, okay. A voice came from above the expanse over their heads. When they stood, they dropped their wings. Okay? Why, why did, when, the, when the four creatures stood, they dropped their wings? Why did they drop their wings? When Yeshua speaks, people listen. Are you with me? Yeah. It ain't the rabbis that's going to turn your clock. It's not the religious folks who are going to, who are going to make your boat float. It is Yeshua. Yeah. And when Yeshua speaks, even the, even the cherubim stand at attention. Yeah. Even the cherubim stand still. Yeah. Even the cherubim listen. Yeah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. And above the expanse over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Let's call that the driver's seat. So the glass is the floor. The angels are the, are the wheels. Amen? And who is in the back seat of this chariot? Yechesko. Yes. That's a place to be. Are you with me? Now you know why it's illegal. Yes, Yahweh them. took them to a place that the rabbis have never been to. Above and whatever the rabbis don't understand, they label illegal. Yeah. Are, you, are you with me? Come on. And they don't want you to get in this chariot, so they tell you not to read it. Why? Because if you read it, you might go above the crystal and not be an enemy under the crystal like his enemies, and you might look up and see the driver. And they tell you that the driver is Adonai Hashem. But there's only one problem. If he was a driver, Ezekiel would melt because of the driver's glory. I mean, the dispatcher's glory. So wait a second. The driver must be someone other than Abu Yahweh. Okay, people say, well, how do we know the Brit Chadashah is reliable? Okay. What happens if you lose this debate? No chance. <laughs> I don't intend on leaving Knoxville until I chew this guy up. But it's not me, it's the Ruach HaKodesh in me. You understand me? Now watch this. So, so what's going on here? Yechezkel is in the back seat of the Mirkava. He looks up into the, into the, th uh, the, the crystal, through the crystal, and lo and behold, not only is there a voice, uh-oh, the voice is coming from a throne. I don't know about you, but only, I, only kings sit on thrones. This is the king of creation. This is the king of the universe. This is the king of glory. This is the king of kavod, somebody. He sees the king, and the voice is coming from the throne, and it's not our boy Yahweh. How do we know it's not the angel? How do we know it's not Abba Yahweh? It says, look at the end of verse 26, the likeness, the one sitting on top of these what? Four wheels. Who are the four wheels? The four living creatures is the one who gets around, and when he gets around, he turns any cloud into a chariot. How did Yeshua go to heaven? In a chariot. How did Yeshua speak to his servants now? In a chariot. How is Yeshua returning to the earth? In a chariot. Come on, this stuff is good. Come on. Because that there'll never be a flat tire. Each of the rims, we read last week, have how many eyes? Seven eyes. Perfect vision. The driver is perfect vision because he's getting his orders from the great dispatcher. Are you with me? The driver doesn't look like a chauffeur. The driver doesn't look like the angel because no man can see the father. Deuteronomy, uh, I'm sorry, Shemot 33. No man can see the father and live. So if Yechesco doesn't see the father, he does see the driver. He's, it's the voice of the driver sitting on the throne, but under the throne as a floorboard. Turn to your neighbor and say, floorboard. Are four wheels. And inside the four wheels is Yeshua's power, not by might, not by our power, but by his Ruach, saith Yahweh. Amen. I think it's Zechariah 4.6. You can look it up in your own time. 
not by human might, not by human power, but by my Ruach, saith Yahweh. So it's his, it's his desire to put us in a Merkava. He put Yechezkel in a Merkava. How do we know he sees Yeshua? Look at the end of verse 26. The driver or the voice in the throne was like the likeness in the appearance of gold. Four six. Thank you. Four six. Yes. The throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man. It doesn't say the appearance of gold. Ezekiel didn't see gold. He saw a man. Turn around and say a man. That's why it's illegal. You think the rabbis want want to lose their disciples to the to, to Yeshua? They don't want him reading this chapter. It's illegal. Why? Because Yahweh is desires to put every person in a mirkava, in a chariot, and to show them the driver, who will in turn turn around and show them the dispatcher. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of proudful, boastful folks who are full of themselves, thinking that they don't need a mediator. They can just go to go. Hashem. They can just go to Hashem. Jewish people tell me all the time, all you got to do is make Teshuvah, repent, and return. You don't have to go. You can go to go to Hashem anytime. You don't need a mediator. Really? Really? Why did Moshe have to stand in the gap to save the people of Israel from destruction? That's right. Really? Why did Job say, I wish there was a daysman? I wish there was an umpire who could lay one hand on my humanity and one hand on his deity and be an umpire, a daysman, betwixt him and I? Because Job knew he couldn't go right to Yahweh. He needed a mediator. And 1 Timothy 2.5 says, ah, there is one mediator between Yahweh and man, Mother Mary. No, the man, Messiah, the man, Messiah, Yeshua. Yeah. Honey, when you die and you cross Jordan's chilly waters, it won't be the Virgin Mary you'll see. It won't be Rabbi Mormoni, Baloney, Joseph Smith you'll see. It'll be the one Yahshua, uh, it'll be the one Ezekiel saw. It'll be the son of man. It'll be the driver of the chariot. It'll be the one whose voice emanates from the throne. You'll see him. For it is written in 1 Timothy 2 5. There is one mediator. Turn your neighbor and say, One mediator. There is one mediator between Yahweh and man, the man, the man, the man, the man, the man, Messiah Yahshua. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he sees the mediator on the throne. He, it, the, the, the appearance of the Father is found in the appearance of a man. Are, are you with me? Now watch this. Now we get to describe the throne. Above the expanse. Now by the way. By, by, by the way. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Above, above the throne. Watch this. Above there is a throne made of stone. We'll see that in verse 26. Above their heads the likeness of a throne. The appearance of a sapphire stone. You know what the word sefira means? Manifestation. The father manifests through the man, his son. It is a sapphire stone, not just any stone. It is a manifestation stone. We're going to talk about that in a few hours. We read about that this morning. The, the stone that, that became the pillar for the house of Yahweh was a manifestation stone. Yeshua said, that's me. That's Petra. Upon this manifestation stone, I'll build my assembly. I'll build my ecclesia. Come on. Does any of this make sense? Yes. Yes. Now watch this. So the throne is sapphire. And we know this detail should not be overlooked. Sapphire always, listen to me carefully, is associated with divinity. <coughs> always. Not sometime. Always. Sapphire stone is associated with divinity. Uh, are you with me? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the manifestations of Yahweh, they are the sefirot. The manifestations of his divinity. Who is Yeshua? He's just a, 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 a manifestation of the Father's divinity. He's got to be divine because he is the same substance and essence of the dispatcher. And Yaakov met the middle pillar of Yahweh. In Yaakov's ladder. What was Yaakov's ladder all about? It was to introduce him to the middle rung. Not three personas.